Congress in Oxford. Uh, uh, as, uh, one of the strongest supporters of IBC, Professor Haifi from Kuwait. Uh, you actually funded IBC Mini Fellowship and it's been very successful. We had about 50 fellows so far trained in different centers. So thank you so much for that uh, great support of, of the fellows. No, thank you very much, uh, Tom. And this is part of the uh, IBC. Our educational program is very important right. and we have seen and listened to many lectures about training and uh, mental training and uh, how the surgeons need that. Right. So we shouldn't put surgeons into the field unless they're really probably t probably trained right. with the mentors and that's the way it should go. So speaking about uh, the, the heart and culture of IBC, we, it, it, from the very beginning that was about changing experience. So. You guys in Middle East <coughs> have probably a little bit different patient's profile. Uh, if you can roughly tell us uh, what's the percentage of obese patients coming with metabolic syndrome, type that, type that, is more than 50% or less? Well, well, in our country, Kuwait, the obesity is very high uh -huh. and it's ranked about nine the, in the world right. with, uh, with the prevalence of obesity. And uh, in accordance with diabetes, uh, obesity, the metabolic syndrome as well is high, especially diabetes. We have around 26% of our population right. with diabetes. And that's why a lot of uh, patients now, they hear that uh, bariatric surgery can cure right. Uh, diabetes. Right. So they come to us for that reason. And right. We are doing a lot of uh, metabolic uh, surgery for them. Right. And the success rate is good around 70 to 80 percent of our patients after sleep gastrectomy the diabetes uh, right. goes away right so it is my experience but also there is some some opinions from uh, from papers that in a in the very long term comparing to a more malabsorptive procedure sleeve might might be a little bit less successful in some patients uh, so my question is what do you do with the situations when you have patients coming back to you with a little bit of weight gain, say like 5, 10 kilos, and they have reoccurrence of, of type, type 2 diabetes. You offer them another surgery or send them for medical treatment? What's, what's the options? Well, uh, Tom, as you know, m most of the metabolic surgeries, if the patient has his diabetes long enough, like more than 10 years, right. most of them they will uh, remit back again. Right. So not only for patients to sleep, With a remission, uh, we'll live uh, his lifestyle right. again and go back to right. exercise and lifestyle. Right. And that's the way it should go. But if he uh, gains uh, more weight and his BMI like more than 30, right. we have a special category. If right. they are redo, mm -hmm. if the BMI is more 30 and with uh, metabolic syndrome, we can offer him right. uh, second right. stage surgery. Do you think at this point, when you have this situation, is there any role for, for medication like Ozempic, you know, the uh, GLP-1? Uh yeah, yeah, we do. We have like now, uh, in Kuwait, Ozempic is not available yet, mm -hmm. but uh, the Saxenda is available. Yep. And we are uh, giving this trials for our patients. And right. But the uh, success rate of remission of diabetes with Saxenda is not as good as it mm. is. So right. It depends on the weight and the discussion with the patient. And always we t uh, take our time with the patient discussing and giving them the options. Right. With our re-surgery, our uh, right. medical treatment. And the last question, uh, again, uh, knowing that your patient population might be very different from mine in Europe, in Poland, uh, just from ob observation, when, when you do surgeries, how often do you see advanced liver disease, like NASH or, or even liver uh, cirrhosis? Well, we have about uh, 10 to 15 percent. Okay. Uh, even we do ultrasounds pre-op and the ultrasound is normal, but when we go in, we see the liver, it's like a nash uh, right. with a lot of uh, fat around it and all this. So, yes, we have this uh, problem, but with the surgery, uh, the patient, they get better. From, uh, again, from my own experience, but also there is a recent papers from my beloved Cleveland clinic and Ali Alminian. Uh, and I think a, a, a lot of those papers, they, they um, kind of uh, uh, looking in liver, in the liver, as a central point of developing uh, metabolic syndrome. Yes. 
Uh, they even suggest to do a screening of the liver conditions. So for yes. example, I do liver function tests routinely on every try to add uh, the fibro scan or ultrasound or whatever just to have an, uh, some, some idea how is it uh, going from the baseline yes, and then refer it later so you think it makes sense or yeah, yeah. and that's what we do ourselves right all the patients they get uh, liver function test and most of the patients will ask for ultrasound but even though with the, with the ultrasound and liver function are normal sometimes when you go in you find it yourself you can see it right and we we, we always take a biopsy of that liver yeah. to follow up that patient. Right, that patient. right. So if the biopsy turns out uh, no, pretty bad, uh, do you refer them to yeah, the hepatology? Uh, to okay. gastroenterologist. Okay. What they do? Do you do another biopsy after some times? Or? Uh, no, no, they follow them up. If the, the liver function yeah. is normal and the other sound normal, right. they just follow them up. Right. And that's the way it goes. Thank you so thank, much. Thank you, Tom, for Great this. And, uh, I hope all the best for the IBC and thank you. with you and Harris. Uh, You're doing a great job. Thank, thank you. you. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. To all the delegates.